are the old familiar sound of the BBC microcomputer, the Beeb, switching on. I would say booting up, but it's so quick it's not worth the name. It's like a bit of your brain turning on, isn't it, if you're a very old nerd like me. Hello, this is a walkthrough of L, a mathematical adventure for the BBC microcomputer, a very old computer from the 80s. The game was made by the Association of Teachers of Mathematics, who are still selling a version of the game, an updated version of the game, online. I haven't seen the new version. I'm not interested in that. I just want to go back and pretend it's the 1980s uh, and um, play the Beeb Micro version of the game, uh, which I'll show you in a second. Um, here is a picture of the or a picture of the cover of the manual that I believe came with the game. It does ring a bell. I do vaguely remember seeing the manual um, way back when I played it at school with a group of classmates clustered around a BBC Micro over several afternoons, um, drawing maps, solving maths puzzles, very elementary ones I seem to recall, but we shall see, although there was one which I was baffled by and continue to be baffled by. Um, so this is the cover you can see now of the manual, which I never saw at the time, um, or I saw it, I never read it, um, and it's quite an eerie, mysterious picture, and it promises more than the game delivers in some senses, uh, as all games covers did in the 80s. Um, however, it's a quite evocative, haunting, mysterious picture, and I've just discovered, um, pushing it through Google image search, that this picture is an homage to, or a direct rip-off of, uh, a picture by Gustave Doré, an engraving by, uh, the famous Gustave Doré, for the Sleeping Beauty story by Perrault. Um, I believe it's Perrault. And um, here is that picture, or that engraving, by Doré. Um, and here is a slightly larger version, which, of course, is useless to you because you can't see it. Um... I do apologise for the incompetence. I haven't done a walkthrough before. Um, but there's the original Doré drawing. And in fact, if you do examine these two drawings, you'll see that the cover of the manual for L and Mathematical Adventure is very much almost uh, a direct copy of this drawing, except for the figure in the foreground, which has been replaced by an old man, presumably the abbot. Uh, and the figure in the background, which you can vaguely see here, um, has been removed, uh, as far as I can tell, from the cover of the manual. Um, I just thought that was an interesting detail, which I didn't know anything about at the time because we didn't have the internet. And we couldn't find out very easily. Um, but that might explain why that uh, cover actually did make an impression on me at the time. Because it was uh, a copy of a picture by a very skilled artist. Anyway, enough of that. Here is uh, the BBC Micro. I'm now going to attempt to boot the game. But I can't, because the disc is read-only, and I have to remove the right protect label from the edge of the disc before running L, as it says there. Um, an odd little detail, but I think it was done this way, the game was made this way, to get around some of the memory limitations of the Beeb, um, the BBC Micro Model B, the most common model found in schools in the 80s, only had 32k RAM. And this game obviously, or I presume, tried to get around some of the memory restrictions by using and writing data to disk as you played along. So using an emulator as I am now, I'm going to unprotect the drive, 
for the disk in Drive Zero, and I'm going to reboot. And there we have a mathematical adventure, L, booting up. Um, the maze map there is irrelevant, and I do seem to recall that it was also known, this game was also known as L, a Cleland adventure, and that name would appear on the title screen that has just disappeared. And I seem to remember that's the version we played at school. And I don't know why it was called a Cleland Adventure, because Cleland um, doesn't seem to appear in any of the literature associated with the game that I can find today. Anyway, do I want information? Yes. And here's the information for the game. Um, copyright the Association of Teachers of Mathematics, May 1984, you see. A very long time ago. Whenever you see this, type in this, blah, blah, blah. Strange commands there. Objects instead of inventory. It's a very hot day. You are sitting on the grass outside a crumbling palace. Your sister is reading a book called Fractions and the Four Rules. 5,000 carefully graded problems. You are bored, and the heat is making you feel a little sleepy. Suddenly, you see an old man dressed as an abbot. He glances at you nervously and disappears through a small door in the side of the palace. The first thing to notice here is that immediately you are alerted to the fact that this is not a simple adventure game. This is not a straightforward or ordinary or traditional adventure game. In fact, this is a what turns out to be a simplified adventure game to teach children. Maths, fractions and the four rules, 5,000 carefully graded problems is clearly intended to signal the fact that that is an old approach to teaching mathematics, and this, L, the adventure game, is a whizzy, new, exciting, and intriguing and compelling and inviting way to teach children mathematics. I'm not sure I entirely agree with that, because fractions of the four, the four rules had already fallen out of favour by the time I was at school, and it wasn't being taught, but from what I know of it, um, or them, the four rules, I think they might actually be a very good model to have a very useful set of tricks to have at your disposal. Um, and I'm not entirely sure that uh, poo-pooing them in this scurrilous way is helpful. Anyway, follow the abbot. That's what we have to do, first of all. We're in a dark hallway. At the south end is an outside door. There's another door at the north end. The abbot is just disappearing through the north, through the door at the north end. So we can go north to follow the abbot. You're in a room which was once a kitchen. It has quarry tiles on the floor and there's a cracked sink in one corner. There are doors to the north, south, east and west. The east door has just swung closed. I wonder why. Let's go east and find out. You're in a large storeroom which has wooden shelves going up to the ceiling. The abbot is standing in one corner. He asks, can you help me please? No. Only joking, yes. The abbot tells you he's looking for a girl called Runia. Hmm, why? Who's been captured by the grey drogos who inhabit the palace. The drogos have taken Runia because they fear she is dangerous to them. Partly they fear her long red hair. But mostly they're afraid because she's discovered the drogos one weakness. And if she's allowed to reveal this, someone may challenge the drogos' power. Strange and inconsistent use of apostrophes there. Clearly this is not teaching English, but mathematics only. Shall I go on? Asked the abbot. No, only joking. Yes, please. The abbot said he would like to find Runia, but he is an old man and needs your help. I'm not sure I entirely approve of uh, this abbot chasing after young girls. Um, something that passed us by at the time when I originally played the game, but clearly slightly worrying overtones or undertones. She is somewhere in the palace. He warns you that there are many dangers such as the Drogo robot guards who are impossible to defeat unless you can find the personal secret number which each guard cannot bear to hear. You will come up against many weird and puzzling situations before you can find Runia. The abbot asks you again if you will help. How, many, how much reassurance does this guy need? I think he's a very insecure abbot, quite possibly having a crisis of faith. Yes, a strange sound behind you attracts your attention. When you turn back, the abbot has vanished. Was he real? Was it all a dream? Shall we give up now? No, of course not. We shall persevere. So, I will now 
continue to play the game using the walkthrough um, provided by Darren Izzard. Here it is. Um, I'm using the walkthrough because I'm not going to make a fool of myself by trying to solve the game myself because even though it's a simple game for kids, um, it is rather involved, it does involve a fair bit of mapping and includes one puzzle which I found baffling at the time and still find quite baffling. So I'm going to be using the walkthrough and I'm very grateful to Darren Izzard, brother of Eddie, who has given us all this walkthrough. You are in a large storeroom which has wooden shelves going up to the ceiling. Okay, let us go west. You are in the old kitchen. Okay, I mean, I think we whiz through the old kitchen, which is why we don't get the uh, description. You're in a room which was once a kitchen in Task Quarantiles. Oh, I believe we did see that. Okay, we go west again. You're in a workshop with wooden benches around the walls. The room smells of machine oil and there are oily patches on the floor. Doors lead off to the south, east and west. Lying on the ground is a small tetrahedron made of solid platinum. I presume we get the tetrahedron. Uh, and here is where the game gets rather irritating. You cannot use L to look because it thinks it thinks you mean left. Um, so you have to type that out in full. And you cannot use I to say inventory. You ha you can actually type inv, which is something. You can also type, I believe, objects or objects, which is an alternative to inventory to show what you're carrying. Um, Okay, so let's go east. We're back in the kitchen, north, to the L-shaped room, which smells of mice. Ugh. Doors lead to the west, south, and east. You're in a large cupboard, which once was used for storing linen. A golden cube is lying on the ground here. We will pick that up, because of course, uh, in all adventure games, you pick up every object you find, in case it's useful later. East, L-shaped room, east. You're in a boiler room, full of machinery which appears to have been standing idle for some time. In one corner is a spiral staircase which goes up. On the east side, a flight of steps leads down, and to the west, there is a door. We are going up. You're at the top of the spiral staircase above the boiler room. A door leads to the east. Quite an odd medieval castle, this, isn't it? Boiler rooms and so on, I suppose. It's possible. Um, you're in a large room with marble walls and floors. Four classical statues stand at the corners of an indoor swimming pool, which is empty. The main door is at the east end, but there's another door leading west. We're going east again. You're in a lobby with orange walls. Doors lead off to the south, west, and east. A window on the north side looks down onto a shady courtyard. Something seems to be moving around down there, but it is too dark to see clearly. Scary. You're in the old music room. The walls are blotched with damp, and there are holes in the skirting board. A rather battered Steinway grand piano stands in one corner. There are doors to the east and west. As you enter the room, you hear a scampering noise. Out of the corner of your eye, you think you catch sight of something moving. Well, well. And here we come to, or we're about to come to, one of the first mathsy puzzles in the game. And at this point, I am going to end part one of this walkthrough. See you in part two.